Hey guys, hello. Coming to you from the bedroom floor. But look, props. I haven't made bed. So props for that. So I had to like document it. But mostly this is a conversation that doesn't really happen in an office. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to go get comfortable. I'm going to set where my zen is and we're going to chit chat because I just feel very led to give this message today. So hello. Let me know when you hop in. Replay watchers, you know the drill. Do me a favor and hit that heart emoji down in the comments so that I know that you came back and gave me a watch. I'm, I'm going to get right to it. I know it's lunch. I know it's Tuesday. It's just like random, but that's what Megan does. Random. No warning. No planning. Megan just goes random. And I'm kind of nervous because I may or may not have animals knocking my phone over. I've got kittens over here. I've got Remy, as always, in my lap. Remy doesn't really love the kittens, so I don't even know what's going to happen right here. We may or may not make it. All right. Hey, guys, give me a hi when you hop in. Hey, Sabrina, Courtney, Rebecca, Jessica, trying to keep up with everybody. Hello. This message spurred from a training group that I'm doing. So if you're already in it, yay. If you're not in it and wondering if it's for you and this message speaks to you, maybe you want to hop in. So I have got... I've opened up my coaching and mentoring um, industry-wide. Doesn't matter what company you're in. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Doesn't matter who you're with. Doesn't matter this or the other. If you're a woman in this industry that is determined to claim her success or to claim her power back, maybe you've hit a bump in the road. Maybe you've hit an obstacle, or maybe you've yet to even find success. Hang on, and bye, boy, bye. I'm not even playing today. I'm not even playing today. Y'all say bye, boy. Anyway, so if you're looking to regain that success, regain that power, or just simply to find it, maybe you're struggling. The beautiful thing is many of our journeys are somewhat similar, and I think it's only fair that I really share my complete journey with you today. I've never done this before. I've never truly opened up to you before and shown, no cat, my journey. She's going to be a brat. No, okay, sorry. Shown my journey to you guys, and I think that it's... It's only fair because I'm asking the women in my group. We're opening up. We're talking about our struggles. We're talking about our challenges. We're talking about our fears. We're talking about our self-doubt. We're talking about probably those lies that we tell in our head, right? So Megan's turn to go. Hey, Cassie. Hey, Jennifer. Hello. All right, so let me just go because this is not the easiest conversation for me. It, nobody's is, right? Struggles are not easy. So where you see me now and where you see me today, and maybe many of you have disconnected with me recently, you see me as a, a leader in the network marketing industry. You see me as someone with confidence. You see me as someone powerful. You see me as someone in success. You see me as someone with no fear. You see me as someone who has it all together, right? Give, do me a favor and drop a one if any of these things ring true. Do you see that in me, any of those things? You see me where you want to be, right? You see me doing my thing, having it all together and having it all down. You see all that, but you didn't see the journey that got me here. And this really is a love letter to those people out there who, who feel lost, who feel, Lord, sorry, I told y'all, who feel lost, who feel disconnected. Um, I didn't start here. And for me, it's still very much a journey of self-discovery. It is still very much a journey of reconnecting with myself. It is still very much a journey of, of finding my strengths. But you know what? And I'll be very blunt with you. And some people are going to roll their eyes. Network marketing saved my life. Network marketing saved Megan's mojo. Network marketing gave me myself back. So let's just go. I know I talk to so many women and they're like, you don't understand, Megan. Um, you know, I had a really hard life. Um, I had maybe this that or the other growing up. I had struggles. Guys, I came from a broken home. I did. I came from a broken home. That's okay. I came from a divorced home. I, I battled, you know, at the very young age of, gosh, like middle school, 11, 12, 13. I battled between two parents who were fighting for custody of me, putting me in the middle, making me feel unworthy to both. Maybe you guys can relate. I felt like I couldn't take care of either one of them. I battled with a parent with addiction problems. I battled with a parent with... Um, Bipolar. You know, I was oftentimes the mom. You guys have never heard me say this. You've never heard me talk about this. Why? Because it's not who I am. It's not who I am. It's not a crutch, but you need to know the story. I was a mom to my parents as early as I can remember, the age of seven. I worried like a parent. You know, I felt like, why wasn't I good enough for this not to happen? Why wasn't I good enough for, you know, to, for them not to want to do that? So you talk about self-worth issues and feeling powerless, you know, but here's the deal. So many of us have gone through that, guys. It's life. It's life. And I firmly believe that God put me on a path for a very specific reason. 
so we battle all of that. So I grow up into an adult. That's great. Woohoo! And I was a very, um, a very young adult, if you know what I mean. I had no direction. I didn't, guys. I was flighty. I had no direction. I didn't really love school. You know what I mean? I didn't really love school. Uh, I dropped out of college. Y'all know my first semester, I went, dropped all my classes and left. Like I did the sorority thing, had fun, met my husband and I left. It just wasn't for me. I started and stopped probably 50 odd jobs in my life. Just wasn't for me. Um, and, and again, that goes back to my self-worth. Every time I would quit something, especially once I had a family, once I had kiddos and a husband, every time I quit something, then the tape in my head said, see, there you go again. There you go again, Megan. Okay, Nala. There you go again, Megan. You're inconsistent. You're a quitter. You're lazy. You're not good enough. You're just going to fail again. And I would try something else. I would try a new job. I would try a new diet. I would try a new, I don't know, a friendship. I would try a new something and it would fail. And then the tape would go again. See, Megan, you're not good enough. You're just going to fail. Until eventually I stopped trying because the tape beat me there. The tape just automatically started telling me, don't even try because you're just going to fail and you're going to disappoint all of these people again. You've never been good enough. You've never been good enough. You've never had your shit together. You're just going to disappoint these people again. So eventually I stopped trying. Fast forward a little bit more because I'm just doing the highlight reel, you guys, because I want to show you the real and the raw about finding your power and finding your worth and why it is so important to freaking understand you are worth whatever it is that you're going for. Fast forward a few um, years later, more recently, uh, we had a very devastating loss, and this comes up to the time, the time I'm talking about now is the time right before I found network marketing. Um, the, the few years right before I found network marketing, and in these years, I'm going to hold it together, I'm going to hold it together. Uh, I, hate talk I hate talking about this part, you guys. You've never seen me talk about it. Mm. Okay. In these years, we lost my, um, my, gosh, I hate this. <laughs> my husband's parents, we lost them very close together. Super close together. We lost his mom to cancer. She found the cancer late. So by the time we were battling it, it was very aggressive and very destructive, very painful. And we lost her. A year and a half later, on Christmas Eve, we were going to check on my father-in-law because we were planning for Christmas the next day. My kiddos were with my dad, so my husband and I were going to check on my father-in-law, and we found it passed away. I hate this. And I, my husband had to find his dad. I'm grateful that our kiddos weren't with us. I know God was there. But, like, we had just lost his mom, and now he, we, we you know, lose his dad, and very traumatically and very implanted, and, and Randy had to be the one to, to find that. So you guys can probably understand, I went into immediate protection mode. I went into wanting to protect my husband. I went into wanting to protect my children. I went into wanting to make everything okay. I went into, um, y'all know, I know, I hate, sorry. Um, you know, I just went into everyone else mode. You know, how can I make my husband not hurt? How can I make it easier for him? And what can I do for him? How can I protect my kiddos? How can I shield them? It was a very hard time. And and obviously, or, or for me, obviously, I just completely lost myself. I wasn't taking care of me. I wasn't taking care of me at all. My, I was the last worry. I was like, I'll deal with this later. You know, I'll deal with me later. Um, they, I need my people to be okay. And so that was a very long two years until all of, a, all of a sudden, I realized two years later, they're doing better. They're, they're living again. I was not. I had completely um, ignored myself. I was, I was, gosh, I was 70 pounds overweight, severely depressed. My marriage obviously was struggling. I mean, come on. That's one of the most traumatic life events ever, and I was unplugged. So my marriage was struggling. I was, God, I was 70 pounds overweight. I was married to my couch. I wasn't doing anything for me. I wasn't working. I would take my kids to school in the morning, and I would come back, and I would sleep. I would just sleep. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be, I don't want to say I didn't want to be here, but man, I didn't want to be dealing with anything. Everything was too hard. Everything was too much. Everything was too painful. So I would take them to school and I would sleep until I had to go get them again. And then once I got them to bed, you know, I got my youngest to bed and it would be like, hey, can I crack open the wine? Can I numb it some more? And I was just numbing everything about me. And yet the tape once again was going off. Megan, you're a failure. 
Megan, look at your body. Megan, look at your life. You're not doing anything. Look at your marriage. It's lukewarm at best. Look at your relationship with your kids. All you do is snap at them. Look at your friendships. Oh, wait. You don't have any friendships because you've run everybody off. Because you're spending your life on your couch. So that tape. Man, it was just beating me down, you guys. It was just beating me down. And I completely surrendered to it and said, you're right. Everybody deserves better than me. My husband deserves better. My kids deserve better. God, my dogs just like everybody deserves better than me. So I just started unplugging even more. So I'm going to pause right here and I'm going to keep going. I want to pause and I want you to listen to me. I am talking about self-worth and power. Do you think that girl right then, do you think who I was right then had any self-worth or any power? Absolutely none. I was the most powerless I have been in my life. I felt like trash, like garbage. How in the hell was I going to do anything that mattered to anybody? You can't trump me on how bad I felt. You can't trump me on how weak I felt. You can't trump me on how powerless I felt. Okay? So we talked about at the beginning how you see me now. You see my success now. You see my power now. You see... Sorry, guys. I'm hiding behind glasses. Can you tell? You see all these things now, and now I've shown you where I came from. So, breaking point. I finally one morning realized something's going to change or I'm not going to be here. I'm either going to whine myself to death, <laughs> you know, so something's got to change and I didn't know what. And, and and I know looking back now it was God starting to wake me up. It was God starting to heal me. It was God starting to tap me on my shoulder. And funnily enough, a friend of mine, a friend of mine was in network marketing. Let me preface that I didn't know what network marketing was. Like, I didn't know. I had no clue. Zero clue. No joke. No idea what this was. But she had a product. I um, mean, it was health and wellness. And she was a friend that I grew up in high school. She was a friend when I started coming out of my shell and trying to reconnect to the world. I told her a bit of my story. And she's like, Megan, I want, I want you to try this. If nothing else, try this just to give you some energy to get up. I want you to try this just to try to help you lose those 70 pounds. Just try this. So... As a struggling mama, and but yet someone who was finally waking up, I said, okay, well, let me try. So I started trying this product, which was great. But what the spark in me was when I realized I looked at, you know, started clicking the business. The business started clicking with me and the sense of community. And, oh, my gosh, there's a team here. And there's women that have my back. And, okay, it's kind of I kind of had fun running for this fast start. It distracted me from the, some things going on in my life. And, oh, my gosh, I feel a little bit successful because I've hit my first rank. And something started waking, waking up at me. And if you've ever heard Martha Beck speak or if you know who Martha Beck is, first of all, if you know who Martha Beck is, throw me some likes and hearts. But if you've ever heard her speak, she talks about this little, this little piece of your soul that just wakes up. I hate crying and I just woke up <clears throat> slowly but surely I woke up I started doing something bigger than me I started plugging into other people although badly I did this industry badly <laughs> I did this industry so badly you guys but it but it was still something for me and I filled my way into success and I slowly started finding my worth and I slowly started finding my power. Along the way, I stumbled a lot too. And along the way, I made some huge mistakes. And along the way, you know, some people unfriended me for bad habits. We won't talk about that. But I let network marketing heal part of my soul. And you can roll your eyes and take away the word network marketing. I let something bigger than myself heal my soul. And I let it prove to me what I was possible. What was possible for me? I let it reclaim for me my power because it showed me in black and white. It showed me in measured standards of promotions, you know, fast starts that you can run for, um, different, you know, benchmarks. It would be a black and white proof to me, Megan, you've got worth. Megan, you're, damn it, you're doing something. Megan, you're making a difference. And then the income started infect, affecting and impacting my family. I got to a point to where I was contributing back to my family again. Do you know how good it felt to move that money from my little, you know, your little, you get paid commissions on a card and I would move it to my bank account. Do you know how awesome that was every time my husband said, well, what is this money from? And I'm like, I earned that. I did that. 25 bucks. I did that. 75 bucks. I did that. 125 bucks. I did that. $500 to my family's income. I did that. $1,000 to my family's income. I did that. 
And very quickly, my husband start, stopped being the haterade because he was the haterade. So if you want to talk to me about haterade spouses, my husband was number one. This, you know, we won't even go there. Scam, you know, scam and stupid and blah, and, da, 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 and all that. But he started saying, and I started to find my power and worth. And I want to tell you something even more funny. And it's very much quantitative. You see me as successful. You see me as a top leader. You see me as a top recruiter, as top in sales, but guess what? I didn't even realize that in myself until July. I didn't even realize. I would have never attached those words, top recruiter, top sales. That I didn't even realize that until July. When I was up on that stage thinking it was a mistake. Literally, there was that little girl again, that little insecure, unworthy, unpowerful girl up on that stage going, this has to be a mistake. They, they typed the wrong name. There's another Megan Anderson. I'm going to be so embarrassed when I get off this stage and it wasn't for me. And it took me a few days for it to settle in. I didn't even understand at that point how powerful and worthy I had become. But it didn't happen overnight. And some of you, some of you won't even start. Some of you won't even allow this for yourself. Some of you are letting the tapes in your head be so much louder than your passions. So you've got that little, the little, uh, that little thing coming up. It's telling you, it's bubbling in you. You've got that hope for more, that want for more. That's why you look at this industry. That's why you start different businesses. That's why you join different companies. And maybe you've joined three companies. Maybe you've joined five companies. Maybe you've joined 10 companies. But when I talk to the women in my group, when I talk to them about their the struggles, it's so black and white. Here's what comes back predominantly. I'm inconsistent in my business. I don't feel comfortable talking to people. There's no way in heck people want to watch me on a Facebook Live. Um, I get in my own way. Guys, I can list, I can list these verbatim for, for 15 minutes. And every single one boils down to, I'm not worth it. I'm not worth it. I'm not good enough. I'm not going to succeed, so let me just stop now. Let me stay inconsistent so that I've got a crutch so that when I don't succeed again, maybe the tapes won't be so loud. Let me make an excuse that there's no way I can get on Facebook Live crying like a fool because people might make fun of me. Let me say that my family just doesn't understand what I'm doing. My spouse doesn't get it. They give me a hard time. Let me say that the kids football and dance and everything. I'm too busy. By the time I get home, I'm tired. You wouldn't be here looking at this industry if something wasn't calling your name. Quit getting in your way. Quit accepting that you're not powerful and that you're not worthy and that we don't deserve to connect with you. Make a damn effort to see what you can do and do it scared. You're not going to become an expert overnight. You're not going to become comfortable in your skin like that. You're going to have to make motions scared. And then you're going to have to celebrate yourself when you start seeing successes. Did you earn some free product? Clap for your damn self. Did you make $25? That is success. Would you have made that anyway or otherwise outside of that? You know, um, did you earn a vacation? Did you earn an iPod? Did you earn little things? Did you get a shout out from your leader? Or you, did you recruit somebody? Did you get your first sale? If you're not making these things epic and understanding that those things show you a glimpse of your power, you will never succeed in this industry. You'll keep stopping. Business five, business seven, business eight, business 20. I don't know, this industry isn't for me. This industry doesn't work for me. No, you are not working for this industry. You are not working for yourself. And guess what? I don't care what company you're in. I don't care what product you sell. I don't care what leader you're under. I don't care what belief system you have. You can take this to the bank that until you accept that you are worth this, you will not move. You can hire every guru in the world. You can do every self-help book there is. You can do your corporate training 20 times a day. You can make a list of 100 friends and reach out to them and make 100 more friends. You're not going to succeed in this industry until you decide, damn it, I am worth it. I am worth showing up. I am worth getting uncomfortable. 
I am worth getting made fun of sometimes because not everybody gets this industry. I am work, worth a little bit of headache every now and again. I am worth staying consistent. I am worth keeping going whenever things aren't absolutely easy because nothing in this life is easy every day and especially not something that means something to you. Anytime there is struggle, there is growth. Until you decide you're worth it, you can stop and start 20 bazillion companies and nothing's going to change. And that's what we're dealing with and working through and growing past in my group. And um, if you are not in my private group and it's all about boss babes taking their success back, boss babes taking their power back, boss babes finding the success and the life by design that is calling to their soul. If that's speaking to you and you want to be a part of this, you need to let me know and I'll put you in um, because we're doing some epic things. And today, my ladies are, they're, they're taking the first step to their power. They're letting their networks know what they love about themselves. And they're also letting their networks know one insecurity that they face in this business. Your networks want to connect with you. The real story, the real you, flaws and all. They want your imperfections. I'm sorry, but I can't connect with someone perfect. I, I don't know anybody perfect. And if you're trying to paint that you're perfect with no flaws, we're not going to drive because like it gives off this weird vibe that I don't even know. Ugh. I mean, I can pretend like I'm a unicorn, but you can't pretend like you're perfect. Unicorn. Um, so if that speaks to you and you want to get on this, get in because I'm starting a branding series tomorrow. Um, and it's all going to be about who are you? Let's connect with the real you. Let's re- Introduce your network to the real you flaws and all, and let's watch your power bloom. So I'm going to get out of here. This went way longer than what I anticipated, but I thought it was only fair that you saw who I was then instead of only seeing who I am now and convincing yourself, oh, well, I can't do what Megan does. Oh, well, she's got it all together. She's so powerful. She's a top leader. She's a top recruiter. I mean, like she must have been born with a horn on her head. I can't do that. I have shown you how broken I was, how broken to my soul I was. Any excuse you can throw at me, I will throw one back at you and show you that I succeeded because of it. All right, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to add you all. Do me a favor because Facebook freaks out. When I add people too fast to the group, you all know Facebook says, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, so I'm also going to drop the link to the group um, here in the comments. If you would, join that way as many of you as can. That way I don't get thrown in jail and all that fun stuff. Um, and you're absolutely um, welcome to bring along anybody you would like. If you want to bring some teammates, if you want to bring um, some friends, some, bring them all. Let's do this thing. I'm getting out of here, guys. I love you very much. You met my kitties, kind of. They're gone now. They're pains in the butts. We'll talk soon. Bye.